barking at the moon in black and white. You should look at the NECA Toys Universal Monsters, the Wolfman black and white version. For the 80th anniversary of Universal's horror film classic, NECA is excited to reveal the Wolfman in ultimate action figure form. Starring Lon Chaney Jr., 1941's The Wolfman is critically acclaimed for Chaney's moving performance and special effects. The sculpt captures the human and monster sides of this complicated character with interchangeable heads, hands, and lower legs, as well as a black and white deco reflecting the look of the original film stock. The figure stands in 7-inch scale, features the authorized likeness of Lon Chaney Jr. and includes wolf cane, animal trap, and stand accessories. Hey, what's wrong with Wolfie? I can hear him barking. Anyways, before we get a closer look, though, at the troubled werewolf, how about the first thing we do is figure out how tall the figure stands. Wolfie's fine, honey. Wolfie's just fine. The figure stands seven and a half inches in height, or he's 19 centimeters tall. For the sake of common sense, obviously you guys will want to see a black and white version of Wolfman compared with the colorized version. So let's go ahead and bring him in right now. Granted, I did have a different head sculpt on him, but don't worry, I'll change that in a moment. And then, of course, to see the other black and white versions of the Universal Monsters, we only really have Frankenstein's monster to work with. Technically, also, there was the, the mummy, but really the mummy, this is the colorized version, although the coloring of his bandages, it could somewhat blend in as being a black and white, but we are definitely going to be getting a black and white version of it. So far, of course, we only just have the Wolfman and Frankenstein's monster in a black and white treatment. We are, of course, also getting that Belly Lugosi Dracula, which I'm super excited for. And you got to believe as well, NECA Toys planned a Belly Lugosi colorized version of Dracula as well as a black and white version also. Addressing the accessories to come include with black and white Wolfie, he gets all the same things that the colorized version comes included with. Like, for example, the interchangeable parts to change the Wolfman back to Larry Talbot. I'll do that also in a second. The figure also comes with an alternate head sculpt for Wolfman, comes with a trap, and comes, of course, included with a Talbot cane, which might be very well the first thing that we're going to have a look at here. The cane is nicely detailed, as hopefully you can see here in this video. The sculpting and carving of the wolf head on the top of the cane, not to mention as well the paint that they've applied to the cane itself. Reaching off to the side, where of course I've stored away all the colored versions of the character. Here's what he looks like next to the, well, here's what one cane looks like against the colorized Talbot cane. You can see that the colorized version does have a more shinier finish of silver, while the more black and white version has more of a tarnished, almost dark gunmetal gray. The actual handle portions seem about the same. And again, matching the colors to the top here, more of a darker gray to the bottom end of the cane and again, more shinier on this version that came included with the colorized version. This can fit into the hand, although not the hand that comes currently in the socket of his forearm. He does actually come included with a human hand for gripping and holding the cane. I'll go ahead and slide that in there. Now, for me, I would be personally more interested to display these figures as fully transformed Wolfman. But if you did want to display him as Larry Talbot, you can certainly do that as well with all the interchangeable hands as well as the swappable head sculpt. Figure also comes included. We'll kind of bypass the rest of the human body parts for a second. Figure also comes included with the very same bear trap. The trap does open up. There's a little latch here that kind of closes and keeps things snugly enclosed so it's not going to be latching shut on somebody's leg. But then once that's detached, you can easily just take the sides and fold them in towards one another, and you've got yourself a pretty practical looking trap, short of the fact it doesn't have the spring. Just to again compare it with the one that we got before, here's the colorized version. The colorized definitely gets treated to a little bit more brown, some additional love of the silver there also as well. On that though, identical sculpts to one another. Uh, figure also comes included with an alternate head sculpt, which so happened to be the same head sculpt we started looking at when we compared the two Wolfmen. Didn't really plan that out well, did I? Just picking up the figure so you can see the difference between the two. If you prefer your Wolfman ho howling, then ideally this is the better head sculpt to go with. If you prefer your more Wolfman just, just growling, I don't know why we're growling in videos, certainly then this would be the stock head sculpt to stick with. Considering now we have ourselves two Wolfman, a colorized version, a black and white version, I think I'm more partial to displaying one with one head sculpt 
and then not displaying the same figure with the very same head sculpt. I'm going to swap thing around, change it, change it up a little bit. Uh, speaking of changing things up, if you did want to change the head sculpt, you just simply just hold on to the torso and just yank the head. You will want to really remove both the head and the neck, have those come together, and then just attach the new head sculpt in. Now, if you're having any problems popping in the new head sculpt, you can easily run the treatment of putting in hot water or running a hairdryer a few passes. This video is just full of sound effects today. And then go ahead and just, like I said, replace that. So two different head sculpts, just to go back tracking a little bit here. Let's go back and grab, grab the colorized version as you can see the difference between the two. You know, honestly, just between you and me and the other four people watching this, I kind of feel like I'm leaning a little more towards the idea of the colorized version werewolf kind of being displayed, I think, with this head sculpt. Uh, I think when it comes to the black and white version of the werewolf, I feel like I'm actually just leaning more to the idea of displaying him with this head sculpt here. Personally, just between you, me, and the other four people watching this, I think I actually think I like more the black and white version of the, of the werewolf, just because it reminds me more of the original 1941 film. It would have not been, obviously been in color. As for the rest of the outfit, just again grabbing, well, we don't have the wolfman here because I've fully already transformed him to Larry Talbot. But I'm going to show you just what the two different bodies look like. Uh, same bodies, yes. Sorry. Different colors, obviously. Instead of having the more olive-colored green, black and white Wolfie does have the colors, again, just in a really dark, dark gray. The gray is kind of consistent from head to toe. There's only a few little areas where you get the lighter coloring. And actually, nicely done, they've gone in there and dry brushed a lighter gray. So it still has all the wrinkles and fold the, the, the original shirt would have had. But then it has all these nice little edges to it, just touched delicately with a little bit of lighter gray. The pants, again, are very much the same dark color. So you're not really getting much of a breakup of gray until you get down to like the cuffs of his legs where they're rolled up. That's where you get a little bit of that lighter gray happening there. There is a fair bit of lighter gray happening, to be fair, also down in the lower legs as well. But the figures really kept relegated to a very, very dark, dark gray. Then, of course, when it comes to the alternate head sculpt here, as we already had looked at with the colorized version, he comes included with a Larry Talbot head, head sculpt. And then, again, just bring in the original figure that we looked at before. Just more preference than anything else. Just do you prefer your Wolfman in color, or do you prefer your Wolfman black and white? b and W. I still got to say, like, the black and white does wonders for these head sculpts and does wonders as well for the rest of the bodies. I prefer myself Frankenstein's monster to be black and white, though I got to still say, like, the colorized version was pretty good as well. Just, I think I lean a little more to black and white. To changing out to get him from looking like this to looking like this, then, of course, you're going to get a whole bunch of different swappable body parts as well. So we're going to go ahead and pick the figure up. Figure comes included also things, for example, he comes with a gestured hand for his human self, which really isn't that much different from the wolf hand that he came included with already. You can go ahead and just remove the hands from the sockets, just pop those right off and replace them then with the human hands. And sort of the neat thing about this, too, is if you do have him, say, in Larry Talbot form, you could actually, let's just say, for example, going to go pop that off. Where did I put the, there we go, the Talbot head sculpt. And you can actually have it where it's partially transformed. Something I did say when we had a look at the colorized version of Wolfman. It doesn't mean you have to completely go from one extreme to the other. He doesn't have to be fully human or fully Wolfman. In fact, have a little bit of fun with that. Have a fur hand that he's looking at, realizing already, and it's probably the dead ringer would have been the giveaway that the full moon was already out. But the fact that he already starts looking at his hand, he's realizing he's transforming. I think that's kind of a fun touch also as well. But let's just say, for the sake of this, let's do the full transformation here. We're going to go ahead and then pop the rest, the other hand off, replace it with the other gestured hand. And then we're going to work for the lower half here. We're going to remove the fur booties. I would love to own slippers like this. Go ahead and just pop off the one leg. Unlike being a smaller peg that were on the hands, you're actually dealing with a larger peg down below here for the lower legs. Pop those off, and then you're going to get these human feet. Tiny little feet. I go ahead then and plug back into the, that open well. Do the exact same thing on the other side. There we go. And now you've got yourself Larry Talbot. Now, I still have the same problem I had before with the other Larry Talbot, just now bringing in this one so you can see the difference between the two. The head sculpts, for one reason or another, are loose. 
I fully have them onto the ball joint, at least I believe that I do. Every single time I put it down, I notice like the heads are very loose on both the bodies. Wolf men don't have that problem. Well, the wolf heads don't have that problem. And yet, strangely, every single time I go to the human self, their heads are a little on the more bobbly side. I'm not really sure what's causing that. Because again, when you're looking at it, unless the open, maybe the socket is too big for the size of the ball joint that they're using for the neck. Needless to say, though, like I said, as soon as you put it down, maybe that's a little bit tighter. But yeah, I did notice it gets really loose real fast. For the articulation now, sticking now, of course, now we've gotten fully transformed into his human self. The figure does have a ball joint. Now, he's got two ball joints, although it's kind of hard to see. If I hold the neck right here, right as Adam's apple, he does have independently a ball joint that allows the head to go up and down, back and forth this way, and technically all the way around. But really, any bit of movement that you do tends to usually move just this ball joint and not so much the one that's further up. So when you are moving the head, you're really only moving one ball joint instead of really the two. Technically, they could have really kept all the, all the head sculpt and the neck as one piece, one appliance, instead of having it as two separate. Because again, every single time you're moving the head, you're ultimately just going to be moving the neck also as well. As for the arms, the arms do come out. Not quite at a 90 degree angle bend, but it's just a little less than that. Eh, there's a, almost a 90 degree angle bend. The shoulder's just a little on the tighter side. You can take the arms and, of course, rotate them all the way around. Figure does have a single hinge in the elbow that also, therefore, allows rotation in the lower forearm. Hands rotate all the way around. The hinge also there as well. Figure has an upper torso ball joint. Down below as we get the lower half of Talbot. His legs do split out. There's a ball joint on the inside there of his thighs. You can, of course, bring his legs forward and back. This lower half is all rubbery plastic. This is there, of course, to conceal the joint that's inside the leg, so you're not going to be seeing it. So it does nice to kind of hide and keep things kind of, well, non-visibly showing those articulation points. Kind of gives you a nice seamless looking body. Uh, there is a swivel slightly at the top of the thigh, a single hinge only on the knee that allows the lower leg to rotate. And then just by the virtue of this plugging in the way that it did, allows the leg, the lower calf, to rotate all the way around with a ankle pivot both up and down this way, and an ankle pivot happening this way as well. Here we have Larry Talbot. Let's go ahead and just put him back down here. I'll slide him over here, maybe, perhaps, and bring, once again, the colorized version of Larry Talbot. One last thing that was also overlooked here in the review, having more to do with the fur booties than anything else, is the figure also came included with a display stand, the very same display stand that came included also with this guy right here, I don't know why I'm pointing like that. The reasoning why they also do that is if you go back and look at the boots again, you'll notice that the peg is right here rather than actually further down on the ankle or on the back of, I guess, the back of the heel. They do that so you can actually arch the foot forward and have the figure sort of in a lunging pose. And that's why the display stand is there. I'd already spent so much time talking about that when we looked at the colorized version of Werewolf. I didn't feel as, as much the need to talk about it in this review. But one thing, unfortunately, about this figure that's also carried now over to this version of Wolfman is that he doesn't have completely flat feet. I wish that they actually had put the peg right here rather than instead putting the peg hole right there. Other than that, though, I really like the look of Wolfman. It's just more preference than anything else. I'm still inclined to pick up both versions of them, even though I lean a little more towards the idea of picking them not in the black and white version. I do think that both versions represent them rather nicely. And really, too, you don't have to display both of them in their wolf forms. You could easily display one as Talbot and one as the Wolfman. It's just a question of which one would I rather do. I might perhaps decide to display one as Larry Talbot in the colorized version and stick the black and white, as it's rightfully so, in his full Wolfman state. Apparently my logic when transforming into the Wolfman, it starts on one side of your body before fully overtaking the other. This must be the side that's facing the moon rays. Apparently I know nothing about moon rays, and I clearly know nothing about the transformation of a Wolfman. The whole point of actually pointing this out was more so to show you that with the accessories available to you, thanks to the folks over at NECA Toys, you don't have to fully invest in the idea of displaying him 100% Talbot. Nor to the other extreme either. You don't have to have him fully transformed into the Wolfman. You could nicely meet it somewhere in the middle. Although in hindsight, I probably should have alternated the other fur, fur boot to the opposite side of his hand, so it didn't look like it was just the one side that had the most moon rays knowing nothing about how moon rays actually work. The figure has, like the colorized version, a lot of stuff to work with. 
Of course, he does have the Larry Talbot head sculpt that I've got currently right now. Two alternate Wolfman head sculpts, all the parts that go along with both ones of those. It comes with a bear trap, and he also comes included with a Talbot cane. Now, for me, even though I am displaying him right now on the rotisserie as Larry Talbot, I feel more to the being the purest of the original 40s classic. I would really like to display him on the shelf as a fully transformed Wolfman. Now, that does put a lot of pressure then on the colorized version because too good of a head sculpt as Larry Talbot is. I don't really want to put it all back to the box, but... They did put a lot of nice browns into the fur of the Wolfman. Of course, the bright colors of the green of his shirt. Ultimately, I think I'm just going to probably display both Wolfman as Wolfman. And Larry Talbot parts are going to go back in the box. Sorry, Larry Talbot. A question for you guys, certainly, if you have picked up this figure for yourself. Uh, if you're maybe, say, only picking up one of them. I know some of you, like myself, are probably inclined to pick up both the colorized versions and the black and white version. But which one are you kind of leaning more towards? Would you rather get the black and white version? Again, may maybe making it look more like the original Silver Screen Classic. Or do you kind of like the color treatment of the Universal Monsters? Which version of the Universal Monsters, specifically the Wolfman, do you prefer more so? The black and white? or the colorized version? Let me know down below in the comments section. And hey, now, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, you apparently know a lot more about how to transform into the Wolfman than I do. It doesn't just start to one side of his body. I probably would start, I would imagine, like little patches. Hands seem to be always the first thing that starts transforming because it always allows the character to look at their hand and think, hey, why is my fingers getting really long and super hairy at the moment? But if you are enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure, yeah, you hit the subscribe button down below. You turn on the bell notification and make sure, yes, you're staying tuned to this channel. What we have wrapped up the review oh, of the Black and White Wolfman. Bet your bottom dollar. There is going to be definitely more NECA reviews lined up and coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.